There we go. Okay, great. So, hey, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you so much, uh, Terrence and the rest of the team for uh, inviting us to speak here. Um, for those of you who don't know us, we're Orchard Robotics, and um, we're a pretty early stage startup company. And we work primarily to build technology for growers to help them with crop load management. So this is our technology. There are these advanced camera systems that use AI and computer vision to gather precision fruit, uh, precision data about all of the visible fruit on you know a grower's trees uh, and all the trees themselves all season long. So this all starts off at the start of the season. Or oh, sorry, yeah, uh, these cameras you know they mount to the tops of you know, basically any kind of farm vehicle. So tractors, ATVs, UTVs, basically anything that moves throughout the orchards. And our cameras can go actually up to 12 miles per hour down the rows. And they're taking, you know, about 100 images a second in total. And they image every single tree that we pass by. And you can see here kind of an example of it mounted to the top of a, a UTV here. And, you know, just driving, uh, driving through an orchard. And we can do a couple of things throughout the season. Uh, the first is counting buds. So we can look at all of the buds on a tree and give a count as to the number of buds on that tree on a per tree basis. We can also count blossoms. So in this case, you can see uh, we're counting these individual flower clusters on every single tree again on this per tree basis, identifying which tree each flower cluster is on and giving results kind of for every tree that we see. Uh, and our kind of our bread and butter is counting and sizing fruit. So here you can see an example. I think these uh, fruit or fruitlets are, you know, about 70, 60, 70 ish meter, uh, millimeters here. And you can see us, you know, uh, identifying each one of these ellipses uh, as a fruit or each one of these fruit as an ellipse and basically locating them on the image and applying a size to them uh, through both our machine learning detection of the fruit and also having a depth map that lets us know how far away each fruit is. Uh, here's a couple more examples and a couple of different uh, tree structures. So we can operate basically on any type of you know tree as long as it's not too too thick or the canopy is not too wide. So here are some uh, I think there's uh, some fruiting wall here, some bee trellis, and some uh, tall spindle trees. But this data is really useful for both growers and the pack house. Uh, everything from doing a harvest yield estimate to having a size prediction of what the pack out might be to of course uh, precision crop load management. Uh, one new feature that I uh, don't think I ever talked about here before, but I uh, wanted to introduce uh, that we've had the, for this season was the ability to detect fruit color. And we're basically, uh, for every fruit that we see, we now are able to kind of mask out the visible portion of the fruit. So taking out any kinds of occlusions, any branches, any leaves, and only looking at the visible surface of the fruit, then taking the average hue color of all of that visible surface to kind of get this determination of what the color is for every fruit that we see. And then again, we can aggregate this on a per tree basis to produce uh, heat maps like this, where we can see here on the right, the average fruit color per tree, as well as here on the left, kind of this uh, color coverage of each fruit. So basically, you know, for varieties like Honeycrisp, being able to figure out which fruit kind of have, you know, a, a wider coverage of red on the fruit versus maybe not as much red on that fruit. Uh, we can also uh, go through and scan an orchard to get data about the trees themselves. So here is an example of a tree trunk scan that we did pretty late on in the season. Uh, you can see we're doing a couple of things here. So first, we're looking at every trunk, uh, and we're ignoring, obviously, you know, posts and also things like uh, replants or pollinator trees. And for each tree that we see, we can also size the trunk at a variety of different places on the trunk itself. So you can see it, it's, it's a bit difficult to see, but you see these like small green horizontal lines on each trunk are basically examples of different, you know, candidates for the width of the trunk that we've picked out. And then from all these candidates, we can determine kind of a, you know, final diameter for each tree trunk. And from that, we can also calculate trunk cross-sectional area. Um, and, you know, our, our technology, it since mounts onto a grower's vehicle and a grower is able to own it and use it themselves, they can basically have the freedom of scanning whenever, uh, wherever, and however many times they want. Uh, one other thing that I, you know, wanted to stress and emphasize through this season is that we were able to make our technology pretty robust. So throughout, you know, this, these past 
uh, these past 10 months or so. Uh, they've faced everything from, you know, really cold temperatures to really hot temperatures to basically a variety of different weather conditions. Um, everything from, you know, uh, wildfires to, you know, like heat waves, uh, rain, snow, and also, of course, just being driven through the orchard, going through bumps, getting hit by branches, all without a major issue. Uh, kind of the last thing I wanted to show here was uh, one of the big points of progress we were able to make this season was through the development of our uh, infield web app, which we call Fruitscope. Uh, this is where all of our data actually gets aggregated and uploaded into the cloud, and growers can actually view the data and start to take action on it instead of it being, you know, just 10 or 100 million data points sitting somewhere on a, in a database. And looking ahead for 2024, there's a couple of things that you know, we're trying to focus on and emphasize. Uh, the first is we're actually building out a new version of hardware. Uh, you can see some example units. We're actually running these uh, down in New Zealand about a month ago, uh, just doing some prototyping and testing. But here you can see um, a couple of new units of our camera. They're much smaller. They're about half the size. And they're also about uh, half the weight and half the cost. So we're able to get all of that down, meaning that we're able to much more easily produce uh, many of these cameras um, for all of our new customers this season. And at the same time, uh, another you know, priority that goes hand in hand is faster scanning times for data. And one of the things that we've noticed uh, throughout this past season is one of the biggest limitations to using you know, these cameras in kind of a real world commercial orchard environment is how fast you can go because if you're limited you know by the speed of the vehicle uh by the speed you're traveling let's say you know if you're only able to go at you know maybe five or ten miles per hour then you're only only ever going to be able to scan you know however many acres in an hour or however many acres in a day and you know if you need to be scanning you know hundreds or even even more than that a uh, number of acres, then it becomes really difficult to get a good sense of what's going on throughout the entire orchard uh, if you can't actually cover that distance in a realistic amount of time. And, you know, one thing that we're always doing is, you know, creating kind of new ways for the data to actually be used and utilized in the field. And, you know, one of our the things I love to say is that, you know, data is only useful if it can actually be used. Because at the end of the day, you know, we can collect as many of these, you know, new features or new data points that we'd like. But if growers can't find a way to put them into practice or use them in kind of their existing day-to-day -day operations, that data isn't you know, it is pretty useless to them. So the more we can do to make it easy for them to just take that data and run with it, um, the, the more, you know, we, we, we want to put effort and, um, and our energy into trying to do that. And uh, here we go. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it in terms of, you know, the updates I had. Um, be happy to answer questions, you know, either, either I don't know if uh, you want me to do them now or hold them to the end of the session.